The Sign of the Beaver, Chapter 21 Then, one morning, a Tian returned. Matt had been waiting, watching the forest trail impatiently, unwilling to go far from the cabin lest he miss the boy's coming. But when he finally saw a Tian approaching, his heart sank. A Tian was not alone. His grandfather stalked by his side. Matt sensed that this meant trouble. Perhaps Sackness had come to reproach him. He would surely know the two boys had been neglecting those lessons. Dreading to face the old man, Matt walked out to meet him, courteously giving the greeting he had learned. Sackness returned his greeting with dignity. He did not smile. His solemn face made Matt's heart sink still lower. Then, startled, Matt turned toward Atian. He did not dare to ask a question, but he saw at once that there was no need to ask. No doubt about it, Atian had found his Manitoua. He had changed. He stood straighter and taller. He looked older, and Matt suddenly realized why. The black hair, which had always hung straight down almost to his shoulders, was shaved away. His scalp, like his grandfather's, was bare, except for a single patch running back from his forehead and braided into a topknot fastened with a red string. Like the fresh bare grease that glistened on his skin, pride glistened all over him. Moreover, he carried a gleaming new rifle. You've got a gun, Matt cried, politeness forgotten. My grandfather traded many beaver skin, Etienne answered. Though he had in those last days become a man, he had not learned altogether to hide his feelings. He did not say more. He waited now for his grandfather to speak. The old man's face was grave, but he did not ask about the lessons. Time of sun is getting shorter, he said, like footsteps of bird. Soon ice on water. I know, it's October, Matt said, maybe November. He had not wanted to count his sticks these last weeks. Indian go north now, Sackness continued. Hunt moose. All Indians go. A tea and not come more to learn white man's signs. Matt could not answer. White father not come, Sackness went on. Matt spoke quickly. He ought to be here any day now. Sackness looked at him soberly. Maybe him not come, he said quietly. Anger flared up in Matt. He could not allow this man to speak, the fear that he had never dared to admit to himself. Of course he'll come, he said too loudly. He might even come today. Snow come soon, Sackness persisted. Not good, white boy, stay here alone. White boy, come with Indians. Matt stared at him. Did he mean to go on the hunt with them? The most important hunt of the year? Sackness smiled for the first time. Sackness teach white boy hunt moose like a Tian. White boy and a Tian be like brother. A sudden joyful hope sprang into Matt's mind. He realized at this moment just how anxious he had been. This was a way out. He did not have to stay here alone through the long winter. Then, as swiftly as it had come, this new hope died away. In spite of his longing, in spite of being afraid, he knew what he had to answer. Thank you, he said. I'd like to go on the hunt, but I can't do that. If, when my father comes, he wouldn't know where I'd gone. Leave white man's writing. Matt swallowed hard. Something might happen to the cabin. He's trusting me to take care of it. Maybe him not come, Sackness said again, not smiling now. He'll be here soon, Matt insisted. He was ashamed that his voice broke in the middle of the word. If he couldn't come, he'd send someone to tell me. He'd find some way, no matter what happened. You don't know my pa. Sackness was silent for some time. White boy, good son, he said at last. But better you come. Sackness glad for white boy. Be Nequinus. Matt could only keep shaking his head. 
The man's word had brought a great lump to his throat. Thank you, he managed. You've been very good to me. But I have to stay here. Without another word, Sackness held out his hand. Matt put his own hand into the bony grasp. Then the two Indians turned and went away. Atian had not even said goodbye. There would be no lesson that morning, no story, no tramping in the forest or fishing. Not this morning or any other morning. Close to panic, Matt wanted to run after them. He wanted to tell them that he had changed his mind, that he would go with them anywhere rather than stay here alone with winter coming on. But he set his jaw tight and stood where he was. After a few minutes, he reached for his axe and fell to splitting logs with a fury. He couldn't keep from thinking, however. Was he just being foolish and stubborn? Wasn't going with them the wisest thing he could have done? Wouldn't his father have understood? He remembered hearing that many white men, and white women too, who had been captured by the Indians and had lived many years in the wilderness, did not want to return to the white world when they had a chance, but had chosen instead to live with the Indians. He had never understood that, but now he could see very well how it might happen. He no longer distrusted them. He knew that the Tian and his grandfather would be kind, and that even the grandmother would make him welcome, and that they would share with him whatever they had, no matter how little. He had found friendship and goodwill in their cabin. He had envied a Tian his free, unhampered life in the forest, and the boisterous comradeship in the village. If he had been taken captive as a child and raised as an Indian boy, how would he himself have chosen? It wouldn't be the same to make that choice deliberately. He was proud that they wanted him to live with them, but he knew that he could never be really proud as a teen was proud of being a hunter. He belonged to his own people. He was bound to his own family as a teen was bound to his grandfather. The thought that he might never see his mother again was sharper than hunger or loneliness. This was the land his father had cleared to make a home for them all. It was his own land too. He could not run away. He was troubled that Atian had walked away without a word of farewell. Had he been offended? Had he really wanted Matt to go with him, to be a brother? Or was he only obeying his grandfather as he had had to do about the lessons? It was so hard to tell what Atian was thinking. Atian had become a hunter. He had a gun. He would not have time now to wander through the forest or to listen to stories. He would not have to bother any longer with a white boy who would never really be a mighty hunter. But surely, Atian could have held out his hand as his grandfather had done. And we'll read chapter 22 next time. Meanwhile, till then, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Love you guys. Thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye.